our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus our brother, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good morning, everyone. Today's Mass is being celebrated for Rita O'Brien. As we prepare our hearts now to hear God's Word and to share Eucharist together, we take a moment of silence first to recall that we are sinners and to pray for God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the wine of salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your forgiveness knows no limits. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. And we pause for a moment of silent prayer. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in faith, hope, and charity. We may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our brother Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Now command the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant to come to a halt in the Jordan when you reach the edge of the waters. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that there is a living God in your midst, who at your approach will dispossess the Canaanites. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of the whole earth will precede you into the Jordan. When the soles of the feet of the priests carrying the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of the whole earth, touch the water of the Jordan, it will cease to flow. For the water flowing down from upstream will halt in a solid bank. The people struck their tents to cross the Jordan, with the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant ahead of them. No sooner had these priestly bearers of the Ark waded into the waters at the edge of the Jordan, which overflows all its banks during the entire season of the harvest, then the waters flowing from the upstream halted, backing up in a solid mass for a very great distance indeed. From Adam, a city in the direction of Zarathon, while those flowing downstream toward the salt sea of the Arabah disappeared entirely. Thus the people crossed over opposite Jericho. While all Israel crossed over on dry ground, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord remained motionless on dry ground in the bed of the Jordan until the whole nation had completed the passage. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. When Israel came forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of alien tongue Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his domain. Alleluia. The sea beheld and fled, Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like the lambs of the flock. Alleluia. Why is it, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back. You mountains that you skip like rams, you hills like the lambs of the flock. Alleluia.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him, started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he paid back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, most of us like to know what the limits and what the, what the boundaries are. It makes things nice and neat, usually. And how many hours do I need to work? What are the expectations for this particular task? What's the dress code going to be? How long should this report or this paper be? All these questions which we think about and we ask speak about limits. After all, we want to know when we can stop the effort. Peter is interested in knowing the limits of forgiveness. Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? Seven times? Peter thought that was... I presumed being pretty generous, rabbinic teaching called for forgiveness only three times, and then after that there was no further expectation for forgiveness. So to forgive seven times goes far above the expectations. But of course Jesus, as we know, is never interested in limits, nor is he interested in boundaries. He's always crossing limits, exceeding boundaries, and we see this vividly in the cross and the way he deals with everyone that he encountered. So Jesus' response to Peter tells us that we should have a limitless store of forgiveness in our hearts, always being generous, even extravagant in forgiving. And in addition, Jesus ties our forgiveness of others to the forgiveness that God will offer to us. If we limit our forgiveness for one another, God will limit his forgiveness for us. So as we remember Jesus' sacrifice in this particular Eucharist today, let us pray for the grace of limitless forgiveness for all those who harm us so we too can enjoy the limitless forgiveness that God offers to us. Turn to our gracious God and we present our needs. 
for the church that her covenant with God, symbolized in the Holy Ark, may have power over all obstacles in her way to her promised land, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations who are in debt to God for the abundance of their material riches may be ready to show compassion to the less fortunate nations in their debts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may place no limits on our forgiveness of our brothers and sisters, giving them 70 times 7 chances to begin again, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked our prayers in a time of sickness or distress, that they may know there is a living God in their lives by his powerful intervention on their behalf, especially for Gary Grabner, Jim Weiss, Doug Weiss, Mary Baxter, Baxter's sister Kathy, Betty Lynn Rutledge, Pete Cabrelli, Billy Schroeder, Benjamin Sterling Heller, and those in our prayer list and book of intentions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the souls still in debt to God and waiting to be purified before they may enter heaven, that this holy mass may obtain for them forgiveness and peace, especially for Maria Caprillus. May she rest in peace, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Today is the memorial feast for St. Francis de Chantel. We pray for the Order of Sisters, the Visitation Sisters that she founded, and for their works. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in the silence of our hearts, we add our own personal intentions. And for all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together we pray for the intercession of Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For 
just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, and all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our brother Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, Almighty Father, and said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more father giving you thanks he gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this and remember me mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis our Pope, Gregory our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. We remember in a special way, lead us. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Fran Jane Francis de Chantel, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Amen. And now as a community united in faith and in hope, we call upon our Father in the words that Jesus has given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace to the Lord be with all of you. Thank you, and we turn to each other with the gesture of Christ's peace. Jesus, the Paschal Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let's gather our prayers together. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Eucharist is ended. We go forth glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everybody.